this is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Is debt beating you down? You need discipline. You need the Debt Ninja. If you've been caught in a financial trap and need to be set free, then you need the Debt Ninja. Want to stop those harassing collection calls? Start saving thousands in interest and fees and get out of debt fast? Then you need to call the Debt Ninja. The Debt Ninja will find the best companies across the country that will help you consolidate all your bills into one easy payment, reduce your payments by 30 to 50%, and get you out of debt fast. If you have unsecured debt of $10,000 or more, such as credit cards, loans, or medical bills, call the Debt Ninja for a free 15-minute consultation. Call 800-826-1246. 800-826-1246. That's 800-826-1246. Call today. The Debt Ninja. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Sometimes we need to slow down and remember the simple pleasures in life. Good coffee, good books, and good company. Come on in. Take a seat. The coffee's just been brewed. Let's see who we have in the coffee shop today. All right, this is Jesse. Welcome back to the coffee shop. Let's see who we have in the coffee shop today. I've got author P. Mark DeBrian. And boy, does he have some interesting stories to share with us. How are you doing today, Mark? Great, Jesse. It's good to be here. Oh, glad to have you. And welcome to my new show, The Coffee Shop. It's been uh, 
a, truly a labor of love. So awesome! I'll take a double latte, uh, no foam. <laughs> so sounds good. Sounds good. All right. So, how long have you been writing, and how long did it take you to write your first book? The first book I've been writing since 2014. So what is that? Two years. And um, it took me about a year to write the first book and get it published. So it now, was did, quite the uh, it was quite the effort. Did you self publish? Did you do the traditional route, chasing agents down? Because that's qu- a year to get published traditionally is really quick, from what I understand. Well, yeah, a lot of things in this whole process have happened. Um, not the way things usually go. Um, I was sitting around, I was a voracious reader since age eight and just loved to read. I couldn't read and uh, got passed over for the second grade because I couldn't read. And so my mother redoubled her efforts where that was concerned with me. And I just grew to love reading and started devouring everything I could get my hands on every different genre you could imagine. And uh, so I ran across this one author that uh, had zombie genre. And I was like, you know, I was into the uh, post-apocalyptic thing, but I kind of ran out of authors where that was concerned. So I I looked to find some other stuff. And the zombie post-apocalypse was out there, and it was just getting really ginned up. And this guy had like 10 books. His name is John O'Brien, by the way. Uh, and he, um, I read all his books, really loved them, and friended him on Facebook and, and uh, was talking with him. And, and then one day he put out to his fans that he wanted to have some people put in a short story uh, for possible entry into one of his short story books, which kind of covered the people that weren't main characters in his series, but were characters that had been popped up here and there. So he had that in the first half of the book and then had reader stories set up for the back half of the, of the book. And so I sent him just out on a whim. I just sat down and cranked out a 10,000 word page or 10,000 word short story that uh, sent to him and he uh, published it and then came back to me later and said, man, we ought to make this into a full length book and and we were going to do it together and he was going to co-author it and it was going to be a you know that whole thing and uh we went from there and I spent like I said probably four or five months actually writing the book and then doing all the editing and whatnot that is a time-consuming process and a true labor of love I mean I've like said I don't write myself because I don't have the time but I know enough people that do. And just like you, I'm a voracious reader. In fact, in third grade, I was reading on a sixth grade level. By sixth grade, I was not only reading what I could, what the books my mom bought for me, but I was stealing her books and reading them. <laughs> Something yeah, in I've, common. Uh, I was... Uh... I was very grown up at an early age because I because of my reading habit because I I would sneak stuff that I wasn't supposed to be reading and it's always been a problem of mine is is knowing things that I shouldn't know. Oh, well, that can get you into trouble, but it can be a lot of fun too. <laughs> yes, it can. Oh, I'm I often know things, but on the and I don't know if you checked out my bio before the show, but. I w- my first husband was special forces. You can imagine how much information I picked up just from being in the in and around the community that I wasn't supposed to know. Yeah, yeah. Pillow talk. Pillow talk, th- having the guys over for a home cooked brisket and some beer. Yeah, they talk. They talk. But uh, being the good spouse, I never repeated anything. That's the way you got to be. And then when he was killed in action, I, you know, took some time and just kind of spent some time on focusing on myself. And uh, then I'd had a longtime friend and I remarried, but that's beside the point. But like I said, I've my job and other things are just so self 
all consuming that I just don't have the time to write books, but I just love them. So that's what. Well, let me first of all say thank you so much for supporting uh, him in his endeavors and uh, our country in that same same vein. That's uh, admirable. Well, I always seem to be doing something. I'm a I'm a army army spouse. I'm an FRG leader. I'm. You know, I work full time. You know, it's one of those things. I'm always busy. That's there's never a lack of things for me to be doing. Yeah, I have a good friend who's also a, an author, and he uh, sets up uh, support our troops. Authors supporting our troops, and we send. Or he sends, I should say. I don't. I say we just because I I know him, but he uh, sends thousands of paper book paper book, uh, excuse me, paperback books to the troops that are deployed to a- places where there's not access to electronics and whatnot. Yeah, I am. I'm also involved with a charity called Books for Heroes. So they do a lot of the same thing. Awesome. So in fact, that's one of the things I love about Books for Heroes. And I'm involved in other, you know, sold military support groups. And I've learned to speak all four branches. <laughs> no, there's that fifth one. Don't forget that. Well, technically, you guys are technically Coast Guard is now under Homeland Security. Yeah, don't get me started. No, let, let's <laughs> save the politics for my regular show. Although I try and stay out of the politics there. I tend well, to cover. They were actually under the Department of Transport. Transportation, Transportation was, for a while. Treasury, Treasury, Treasury. That's right. When I was in there. So. That was many moons ago. That's but anyhow. A, yeah, the movement of the, the the Coast Guard always seems to get the short shrift and see, always seems to be shuffled around depending on who's got a bright idea this time. So, but so you spent uh what you said four months writing and editing your book. So then, what happened next? Well, it kind of the thing of it was John had 10 books out he was looking at he was working on doing the audios on them and he was doing another couple of books with a couple of other authors before i came along into his sphere of influence and uh he went through and and really i mean i can't praise him enough for his mentorship and and what he did for me when i first started out um but he just didn't have the time to devote to my book because he was so busy with his stuff and with the other projects that he was already working on. So eventually in that period of a year, I had gone to, and we met in, in Seattle and, and hung out and talked a bit. And I basically came to him one time and just said, Hey, are you, you know, would you be upset if I just went ahead and took the project and, and made it completely my own and, and separated from uh, what we were going to do and make it my own book. And he said, absolutely not. Go for it, he says, uh, with my blessings. And and so I did. And so it was still based in his world originally. So I I had to change some stuff around a little bit to make it to where it wasn't, you know, a cookie cutter of his books, but it it's similar to his world now, pretty much the same, but with a few different names and whatnot. But Family Reunion was the name of the book, and it uh, took place in Seattle, Washington, in that surrounding Pacific Northwest area, which is where I was originally from, and uh, that's where the whole book is located. So, And then the new book talks about the main character from that book's um, his wife and kids back in the east, in West Virginia and in, in South Carolina. I don't think you ever actually said, are you traditionally published or self-published or small? No, I'm self-published, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you did go the self-published route. What made you decide to go self-published versus traditional versus independent publisher? What made you decide to go that route? The indie route for me made the most sense because I really didn't have that much invested other than my blood, sweat, and tears. I mean, I didn't. Um, have, you know, 
my wherewithal was not in the book. In other words, it didn't, I didn't have to publish it. I wasn't something that I was doing for a living. It was, it was at the time, it was just kind of a lark. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and put this out there just to see if, you know, if people want to read it and, and it took off, it went crazy. And I was just amazed. <laughs> well, you mentioned so Indy for me was just kind of the easiest way to get, get there. And uh, I'm glad I did it because I really think that, uh, you know, with uh, Amazon and, and with Kindle and with uh, Nook and iTunes and, and the digital uh, book business is just amazing. And I think it's as historical as the Gutenberg Press, to be honest with you. Uh, the fact that we have all these people around the world that, that can have their voice heard, you know, a lot of it's crap. A lot of it's really good, too. Well, I can say I've read some great indie books, and I've read some great traditional books, and I've read bad indie books and bad traditional books. <laughs> yeah, so, it's not exclusive. No, there is no exclusive thing, and I, I've come to firmly believe that just because you have a traditional publisher behind you doesn't mean it's the greatest book in the world. And I do know there are writers that churn out book after book after book after book after book. So do you have another book in the works? Is there another, are we expecting a third one from you? What's going on? Yeah, I'm looking at probably my expectation is that there'll be five books in this series before I move on to something else. Um, don't kill me, readers, if you hear this. Uh, but I, I probably am going to, close this one off in, in five books the first book um was like i said a lark the second book i really sat down and and decided that you know which direction to go and really did a little bit more planning on it and uh so yeah i plan to branch out and do more stuff eventually but there's a third book i'm about eighteen thousand words into the third book already and actually the second book was to be the third book but it didn't work out that way. Oh, the best, the best laid plans don't always work out. Sometimes they work <laughs> yeah, out better. I was better. in the middle of writing. I was, like I said, 18,000 words into the second book when I thought, man, this is going to take me a while, and it's going to take longer than my people are wanting to wait for the next story. So I thought I'll just whip off a quick you know, short story and, and publish it and put it out there at a reduced price and, and give that to them so that they've got something to chew on while I'm finishing the actual second book. And what happened was um, the damn characters in the second book or in the third book, which I started writing uh, just grabbed me and, and wouldn't let go. And, and next thing I knew I was at 80,000 plus words. And, and <laughs> so it became the second book. So the characters decided to run away with the story. Yeah, you know what? Uh, it happens. I've heard that. I've heard that. You're not the first author to mention that to me. Now, some I've I've talked to authors that, you know, they sit down and they before they start writing, they do this plot and this outline and they do all this planning. And then I've talked to authors who are what I call hybrids. They're like, okay, I've, I need this plot point, this plot point, and that plot point, and that plot point. What happens between those four plot points, you know, those those three or four plot points, anybody's, even I don't know. And yeah, it's, it's, a, it's for me, writing is, is cathartic, and it takes me uh, places that I wouldn't have thought it would take me. And, uh, it, it's not something that I sit down and structured to the point that, uh, I, w before, w before the interview, we were talking about different methods and, and I am definitely what they call a pantser. I fly by the seat of my pants and, uh, I find that it, I, I'm more creative that way. I, in my mind, in my opinion, and I think that of your readers, whatever produces the next book is what you need to go with. I, in fact, one of my favorite authors, he happens to be a New York Times bestselling author. He he likes to quote, and I forget who it is, but uh, one of the classic authors who said, you know, no, I think it was Frost, no joy in the writer, no joy in the reader, no surprise in the writer, no surprise in the reader. Exactly, exactly. And 
in fact, it's Brad Thor who I'm referring to as my favorite yeah, author. Yeah, I love his books. I've, I've read everything he's got out. Same here. In fact, I also have autographed copies, and I've been oh, to dog. one, two, three, four book signings, nice, four or five nice. book signings. Yeah, and- I, I, you know, I read so much that I almost, you know, until I started writing, I might add, but I have read so much up until that point that sometimes I would get uh, different author stuff confused in my mind somehow, and I would be thinking, now ah, that guy's... You know, this the, did this in that last book, and why is he not in this book? Oh, wait a second, this is the wrong guy. <laughs> I actually, so you, I don't, I'm not real good at the trivia thing. So I was actually reading That's Vince that. Flynn when he was alive and Brad Thor at the same time, and those were two because Mid they're trap. Yeah, that was a good that was a good story too. Uh, Kyle Mills, I believe it is, is still continuing the Mid Trap storyline. I have haven't read it just because I wasn't ready to read Mitch Rap without... Written some, by somebody else? Yeah. I think I actually have read one of those. I wasn't disappointed. I was just... It, it's different, but it's going to be. You know that It's going to be. It really it, is. Yeah. You know, I but love Vince Flint. And, and I actually... Go so early. That was, th- that, that, was pretty that was very, very sad. In fact, it was funny. I got... I, the first one I read was Memorial Day, which I right. think was a Flynn. And then I got, you know, and then I found uh, a Thor book. And then I went back. I mean, I was going, I literally went through everything both authors had out at the time. And it's been a few years now, obviously. Yeah, I see, because that just, In, me, I get them confused, the characters. I, d- like, I went I'll through- have the Camel Club people from Balducci in Vince Flynn's <laughs> novels or, you know, I'll have. Yeah. The guy from uh, Mitch Rapp in, in Thor's novels, or you know, I just I like I said, I I read so much back then that I just I devour them, and then I go to the next one, and and sometimes they'd get a little blurred. At the time, I was reading, I was almost I I went through everything both authors had out, and they both had a fair few, you know, at least five or six out in two weeks, <laughs> maybe three. That sounds a lot like me. I, I I burn through an author pretty quickly once I've found that I like his stuff. And hopefully I'll have enough books out there eventually where people can do that with me. But, you know, uh, two so far. We'll see so how So you know, is the second book already out or is it coming out soon? And Actually, you... I sent the um, – I ordered the proof from for the paperback today and I uploaded the um, – Final file for Kindle today, and it's due out in August 23rd. It's available for pre-order on Amazon right now. Um, Family Reunion J, uh, the capital J letter is is the uh, device that separates it from the first book. That's cool. So, yeah. so it's due out the 23rd, and uh, the paperback will be out at the same time and i'll be doing an audio shortly thereafter so you're going to do an audiobook version yeah i did the first one i was approached probably six or seven months into the uh after the release of the first book um guy called me up and said or emailed me or whatever however he contacted me and said uh every time i go to check on one of my books or one of my authors that I'm, I'm working with. He was a producer. He said, your dang book keeps popping up. So he said, do you want to make it into an audio book? And I said, sure. And it's Savage is his name, Greg Savage, and uh, did an excellent job with it and got me going. And, and it's been out since February, the audio on the first book. And so, yeah, that, I think it really rounds it out with uh, – Amazon, if you have a if you have a digital copy out and uh, audio copy out, they can <coughs> excuse me, they can um, whisper sync it, which basically you can stop reading and start listening without any hesitation. Well, I'm also a fan of audio books. Now, I will admit, I only get unabridged audio books because some authors will put out an abridged and an unabridged version. I don't want anything abridged. I want the whole story and all the details. And I do a lot of traveling for my 
day job. And so for work, I do a lot of traveling. And so I will put on that audio book when, I, whether I'm flying or driving or when, it, when it's just not convenient to have a book in my hands. And I like I like the I like the uh, unabridged, and I have listened to several of them, um, but I kind of stopped doing that when I when I got the stand and uh, the unabridged stand, and listened to it clear across the country as I drove. It was just too much. <laughs> I don't think I've I've read or listened to that one, but you know it's like sometimes. In fact, funny story. I. I think book five was out. I had never read any of the Harry Potters. I was, you know, in the definite minority at the time. It was when everybody right. was waiting, you know, hang, I think book five was out. Book six was due out soon. And I hadn't read any of them. And my husband looked at me, it was my second husband looked at me and like, you've, what do you mean you've, no, just never got there. You know, so he, we had a, nine hour car ride coming up so he downloaded the first harry potter in audio format and we listened to it all the way you know we listened to part of it all the way there and then back on the way back we had to download the second one and it was just one of those things it was just that's what got me started on audiobooks so it was kind of it's kind of a neat thing and since then it's I have to say some authors get one purchase out of me you know I'll get the kindle version and burn through it my absolute favorites, most notably, Thor, will get not one but three. I'll get the hardback <laughs> so I can get it signed. I'll get the Kindle because that'll hit my that'll come out at midnight, and I'll usually have a Thor book will come out at midnight. By the time the sun comes up, I will have it finished. Yeah, and they're not small books either. And then I'll get the audio on top of it. <laughs> you you could be my fan anytime. I I love to see people that buy all three. Oh yeah, I I don't always, but I mean most if I if I I'll pick up I I will pick up any author once. You know, I'll I'll buy any author once and then if I like it, I'll start sniffing around. And it's odd after that. If I find somebody I like, that was my whole that was my whole way exactly. of doing things. Was, exactly. Like, find somebody I like. If I read their 16th book and they had, you know, 20 books out, I was cloistered with their, you know, their stuff yeah. until it was done. Give me the other 19. So, exactly. I mean, like I said, I, and I am a very voracious reader. And I do read rather quickly, but then I'll go back and reread, or in the case of, Someone that has an audio book, I'll get the audio book sometimes and listen to it again, so I can slow down and go on the whole adventure at a more right. normal right. speed. Well, you're just like me too. With we, you know, and the biggest biggest disappointment is getting to the end when you go through that first blast read, and then you get to the end, you're going, "Oh crap! Now I, I'm I'm done with it," you know. Yeah, That's, and now I've got a whole other year to wait. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> because Brad Thor does a book a year. Period. Although I will say this past year, he actually put out a short story, the first one ever. So that was pretty cool. So it got this little mini dose of Thor in midsummer. It was like, that was awesome. You need to do more of that. <laughs> so. Well, that was what my uh, family reunion, Jay, was supposed to be. It was just supposed to be a little taste. And then when, uh, like I said, the characters got a hold of me and wouldn't let go, I it just went on and on. And so I said... You know, you go with it, and that's what I did. So I'll get back to the other one here as soon as with the dust settles from getting this one out and, and promoted and whatnot. Now, we were talking off air, and you said that you have uh, a background in marketing. So have you used that to help since being self-published? You're responsible for all of it. Have you used that to your advantage Oh, sure. Sure. Uh, you know, it's uh, amazing what uh, the digital age has provided for us, in, especially in, in putting things out there. But it's also made it uh, much more difficult to reach a widespread 
audience because there's so much clutter out there. I mean, you're just bombarded with stuff daily. So you have to be, uh, you have to be unique in some way or the other in order to gain attention. If you don't have uh, something going on that's going to grab people, then um, you know you get lost in the in the trees. Um, so the the marketing background has definitely helped me because I've when I see an opportunity that I recognize as being something that might further my book career or my author career, uh, I jump in with both feet. Sometimes it doesn't work out, but that's the risk with anything. Um, you know, but sometimes it does. Like I, I, uh, met, uh, a guy at a, at a, um, one of the book fairs that I was at and, uh, he turned out to be an actor and he had, he also was a writer and had his own publishing company. And, um, so we got to talk and he said, well, yeah, he says, and I did an interview with him and, um, turns out he got me a as a an extra in the uh John Russo movie uh My Uncle John is a, a zombie which is uh John Russo was the original writer of Night of the Living Dead with uh, George Romero and uh so I got to be an extra in his movie which has not been released yet but it was a uh, you know an opportunity something like that just you know I just jump on that and go do it and I got a lot of a lot of good contacts and and whatnot throughout that whole situation to where I really feel like it was a it was a win. Oh yeah, my husband's always wondering why I have a business card holder that holds like thirty business cards, and we'll end up going to do something, and sure enough, I'm handing out a business card, and because I'm always. I always carry station cards with me. I always carry, sure. you know, I always have something on me. And so now what advice would you give to another writer who's either already self-published their book or about to for about marketing? The, the main thing is I say you've got to be willing to invest in your own product if you expect other people to. Uh, you can't um, expect people to just happen across your stuff. You've got to make an effort. You've got to put in either time or money or both in order to get your stuff in front of people. Because unless they have it in front of them with you giving them a reason to look at it, then they're going to not see it. You're just not going to, you're not going to go anywhere. And I could tell you of hundreds of people that have really good books out that aren't getting any readership or aren't making many sales on Amazon, uh, you know, or not make many, um, sales on, uh, in their, in the bookstores because just nobody knows about them. So by investing time or money, are we talking like Google ads or Facebook ads or time on some Twitter? Of, some of both. And you have to see what works for your genre. And because, and Facebook, Facebook is good, but it is also a, a black hole of time sucking if you don't watch it. Um, you know, I find myself, you know, I'll just jump out there to make a post so that I can give some stuff to some people and do a giveaway or something. And, and bam, next thing I know, I've been on for two hours, you know, and that's just not productive for me. I can't, I can't just sit there and, and veg out and, and laugh at cat videos, you know, and it's just not the best way to go about life. So yeah, it's uh and Google, I've used it and you know, there's just certain things that you've got to look at with each different genre or product, whatever it is you're marketing, what you know, my books, I got into the uh, all the different uh Facebook um pages that were about uh zombies and dystopian um all all things about uh, all things zombie ATZ on Facebook is a really good um, resource and site. Uh, Jeffrey Clare is a good buddy of mine, and and he runs that site, and he's got like five thousand people that that are on there. Not just you know they don't just sign on and don't come back, but it's a, it's a very active community. And then there's you know uh, 
band of dystopian author and fans and <coughs> excuse me, the zombie in um, just all kinds of different, but that's what you've got to do. If you, if you've written a book, a romance book, then you need to find out what's hot. You need to find out and go out and find uh go on Amazon, see which is the best seller, go out there and search out and find people that are saying something about it on online and, and talk about it and find out what they're wanting. Right, right. I mean, it's one of those things, I'm sure everything doesn't work for every genre, every product. So how do you evaluate what works and what doesn't? Well, document, you got to follow through with what you're doing. And that's, that's always the hardest part about it is, is tracking your results. You know, you can spend money, but if you don't spend it wisely, it's money not well spent. Um, so how do you, how does somebody, okay, so say, let's just say, for example, you put an ad out on Facebook, since we were just talking about Facebook, how do you track your results? Do you, you know, if you've well, just you, released you, your first book, you put an ad out on Facebook, how do you know if the results are coming from there or from the fact that you're tweeting about your book? Because I basically always put some kind of tag in that, in that post that's going to give me an idea of where I'm getting the traffic from. Uh, with Facebook, especially, anytime I post something, I'll always do a custom URL for whatever it is I'm doing. And I've got a spreadsheet, and that spreadsheet tells me where I use that URL, um, what, um, where I posted it, what time I posted it, what, uh, you know, any other extenuating circumstances surrounding the whole thing. And that gives me a, you know, I can go back and look at that URL or that customized URL and it'll tell me how many hits it's had. Stuff okay. like that. So Amazon actually lets you create custom URLs or is that something you have the technical Oh, uh, you can get uh, you can get a URL customizer from many different sources, Google, um, there's a bunch of them out there. You can just go out and Google a, a URL shortener or customizer. Okay, will, so you do will, because you... normally, if in the way that I originally found this was, I was I was looking at the the link for my book and it was like a mile long, and I was like, crap, I don't want it to take up 16 lines in this post. And so I went out and found a URL shortener, and I said, hey, this would come in handy for trying to make sure that when I do something, I can figure out how many times people are looking at it. That That is a great tip. That That is really an, an awesome tip. All right. We are a little past the bottom of the hour. So I'd like to take a brief commercial break. So why don't you, we'll, we'll get back to the marketing and tips for new writers in just a minute. Got to pay those bills. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Is debt beating you down? You need discipline. You need the Debt Ninja. If you've been caught in a financial trap and need to be set free, then you need the Debt Ninja. Want to stop those harassing collection calls? Start saving thousands in interest and fees and get out of debt fast? Then you need to call the Debt Ninja. The Debt Ninja will find the best companies across the country that will help you consolidate all your bills into one easy payment, reduce your payments by 30 to 50%, and get you out of debt fast. If you have unsecured debt of $10,000 or more, such as credit cards, loans, or medical bills, call the Debt Ninja for a free 15-minute consultation. Call 800-826-1246. 800-826-1246. That's 800-826-1246. Call today. The Debt Ninja. 
In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. Writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, Visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. All right. Thank you guys for hanging in there with me through those commercials. Hey, Mark. Yes. Thank you for hanging in there with me. And by the way, I've decided I've got a little gift for you. Joy. This episode is going to air on August 23rd. I believe that's a special day for you. Awesome. That is actually very, very good. My book is out. It is yeah. It is out in the world. My second book. Yes. I thought that would be one <laughs> Family more. Family Reunion J. That would go right along with your mar- the marketing conversation we were yes. having. Perfect. Nice, nice. Hey. Thank I... you so much. Oh, no problem. I've got it in with the station manager. What can I say? <laughs> I can get it out on the 23rd. And... I... And I will also be sure if you make sure I've got your Twitter handle before we sign off when I will tag you in the post as soon as I see that the post goes live so you can share it. Nice. Very, very good. Thank you so much. Oh, not a problem because the way I see it, it helps you and then you spreading the word about the show helps me in return. So it's mutual beneficial. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, uh, I'm going to have a release party on the 28th uh, right before – the uh, first airing or the second night of uh, Fear the Walking Dead. So it'll be like eight o'clock on Facebook. I'm having a big deal. So make sure to remind me about that before we close up. And I'll give my uh, Facebook page out, which is not an author page. It's just a straight up uh, friend page. And uh, because I like to be able to have friends and not just have readers. Oh, both things are awesome. What, What can I say? But no, like I said, I thought I thought that would tie in real well. I was thinking about it during the commercials going, you know what? It would be really cool. And another marketing that is thing. Cool. If this came out on launch day. That is cool. So, and of course, it'll also be on my website, jessiescoffeeshop.com. But like I always say, I'll also give you the link so you can put it up on your site too. It will be, without a doubt. So like it said, will be up on several different places. Facebook pages. So you'll hey, be good. awesome! Cool. I, I, I love new listeners. <laughs> so you will have many, and I love new readers. Hey, like I said, it's a it's a new show, so you're you know one of the earlier ones in the show, but I'm trying to get it to grow. So and and also I'm going to say this: if any of the, the your listeners are also writers or authors. I love to have published authors come on my show. So 
they can always drop me a line at Jesse's POV at KLRNradio.com. Yeah, that's so. everybody but uh, Armad. Armad, you're not allowed. Why isn't Armad allowed? <laughs> I just like to give him grief. Uh, he was my first podcast. Got it. So you do your own podcasts? No, no. He, actually, he's got Armand Tufo, which is uh, Armchair, which is a, a very good resource for authors and lots of fun. So <laughs> he's that's, a good guy. That's cool. That's cool. But like I said, it's I, I just thought it would tie in real well with the marketing we were discussing. So yeah, no, no your, doubt. Your custom URL thing, I think, is a great brain, brainstorm because – Goodness knows, I I have trouble tracking all kinds of things. And... Yeah, well, that's the, the the trick of it is documentation. Because if you didn't, because if I think, well, you know what, I'll go back and add this to the spreadsheet later, uh, it it gets lost. So you, as soon as you post it or use it, any URL anywhere, make sure you add that to the uh, add that to the spreadsheet immediately, because then it's there for for perpetuity and you're you know you can always go back and say so where did i get this guy from or where did this you know reader come from or whatever well that's awesome that is awesome and, and if uh, your listeners want to hook up with my you know my definitely you're going to you know talk about my web page a little bit more but go for it. is uh is my website and i do a blog on there and i have all kinds of neat neat stuff on there and I do contests and stuff give away really cool things right now I've got a pre-order contest which won't be a pre-order because this is coming out on August 23rd but uh, I'm giving away a Night of the Living Dead script uh, signed by John Russo and George Romero both and that kind of thing I do quite a bit so if you guys want some really cool zombie swag or or just post-apocalyptic swag or just neat swag uh Hook up on my website, get on my newsletter, and I will send you notifications whenever uh, there's something going on. And I try and keep something going on pretty much all the time. Oh, that sounds awesome. So who knows? I I read all, all kinds of books. I, my Kindle is one of those things, you pop it open, you scroll through, you'll find thriller, 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 nonfiction, dystopian, romance, I mean... Between this show and my regular reading habits, it's still a wide variety of things that I read. Yeah, people really sometimes will ask me, "Is it well? Why in the heck are you writing in a post-apocalyptic zombie genre?" And I and I tell them, I said, "Well, you know, I, I kind of lucked into this situation, but on the other hand, it's really not about you know death and despair. It's about hope and." regeneration and you know how how can you survive this and and come out the other side i think that's why the zombie genre and why the walking dead and shows like that are so popular is because it's not about the you know sp- specifically about the the horror it's uh, it's about the you know can i live through this can i you know the, the hope involved in it all you know uh, survive and thrive you know so that's what that's what, the reason why i like writing it because it gives uh you know gives people an opportunity to just delve in there and say what would i do in this situation and man that's cool i'd love to be able to do this you know and start over a fresh slate that one of the things I always look for in a good book is something that transports me away from whatever is going on in my everyday life, no matter exactly. what the genre is. And Zombie World certainly does that. So, like I said, I think you may have picked up a new reader. <laughs> cool. I usually read at least one book from everybody that's on the show, though. So. Well, but, I hope you enjoy it. It's uh, it was it was definitely an, a labor of love. Hey, that's, I have heard some pretty interesting stories about why people got into writing. So that's another neat one to add to the collection. Now, what tips would you give to a new writer just starting out? Someone who's either in the process of writing that book or how far in advance should they start advertising? How far in advance should they start building their, what they, what you know, it's generally turned turned in the industry that writer's platform, that website, that social media. 
the social media you need to start immediately. You need to get out and even if you've got you're not sure if you're gonna write in thriller or if you're gonna write in horror or if you're gonna write in uh, zombie or science fiction, whatever the genre, you just go out and get on social media and find like minded people and get involved with that community where wherever it's at and once you're involved in that community and you know that's going to build it's going to do nothing besides you're going to be it used to be called in the old days of business it used to be called networking and guess what that's exactly what it is it's getting together with other people and uh making those connections and once you get those connections made uh, it's going to pay off down the road because whatever genre you go into, you're going to, you know, you're going to benefit by having that base there to begin with. As far as the website and stuff goes, that's not necessary until you actually get real close to actually publishing, you know, because you're going to not going to build a readership until you have something to read. So I wouldn't say that's a high priority, but when you're looking at getting out there, definitely the social media, Facebook, uh, is is real big and uh you know t- twitter and uh you know instagram somewhat you know snapchat yeah but you know facebook and uh which is kind of getting gray in the beard a little bit as far as people's consideration of it, of it being cutting edge but it's still really really important um as far as getting ready right that's the biggest thing is sit down we call it ass and chair time i'm sorry if that offends anyone but that's what we call it you know is putting yourself down there to just get it out on the page don't worry about your grammar don't worry about the sentence structure don't worry about being uh you know you just want to stay in the right tense and the right person point of view pov and uh just get it out on the paper and then once that's done you can go back and 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 tweak it and edit it and get the grammar and the punctuation correct uh of course you know you everybody has their own style but that's the way I do it now do you hire an outside editor to copy edit or proofread the stuff before you publish it well there again um my mentor John O'Brien uh paid for my first um edit by a professional editor uh, when I did my first story. And I saw the difference in that story from pre-edit to post-edit. And I can tell you that it was worth every single penny of it. Now, I didn't have to make that initial investment. John paid for the first one. I have since then paid him back, but um, it wasn't something he asked me to do, but I did. And But the fact a professional editor is just that. You know, you're a writer. Don't try and be an editor. If you're an editor, you're an editor. If, if you want to be a writer, write. Just sit down and write. That's the biggest thing. And yes, I would definitely invest in a good cover and a good editor. So since you mentioned covers, where do you get your covers? Do you have a specific artist you go to? Yes, yes. Justin McCormick is my artist, and he is phenomenal. Um, you can see his connection to me on my Facebook page, and, and uh, I tout him every time I get a chance because he's he's actually really really good uh not terribly expensive you know you're gonna pay now if you're gonna want to get a book out there I'm gonna tell you that if you want it to be marketable if you want it to be successful you're gonna probably end up and I know this is gonna make people cringe but you're probably gonna end up spending about at, at around two grand you know and some people say I just don't have that well you can do you can make do with you know getting by with no money you can do it free and that's editing doing everything yourself and you can get it out there but i'm going to tell you if you look at the books that you're interested in uh writing in that genre look at the number one bestseller in your genre look at the look at all the different books and the book designs they're they're you know the way they're formatted check all that stuff out if you're willing to do all the work and think that you have the case ability of doing all the work by all means go ahead and do that but i'm saying i think family reunion my first book was such a big success because of the fact that it looked professionally done and it didn't have a hundred problems with the format and it didn't have typos in it and it you know it was it was well edited 
Well, that's a good thing. So do you, if someone says, well, I don't know what to write, do you tell them to just start writing? Do you tell them to write what they know, write what they read? I've heard all kinds of advice. Well, definitely, you know, write what you know is, is definitely a good thing. Um, writing what you don't know entails massive amounts of research. You know, if you're going to write about something and you don't have a good handle on it, that's what I spend most of my time doing. If I get taken down a certain direction with my writing, if I get into a subject matter that I'm not 100% on, I have to spend um, probably three or four hours for every um, hour of writing to doing the research on whatever it is I'm talking about. My new book had a lot of medical stuff in it. Uh, goes back and explains the vaccine and the the flu and the vaccine that caused the apocalypse, the zombie apocalypse to break out in the first place. And um, so I approached a, a doctor, my doctor, and his name is Peter Techman. And he uh, sat down with me and explained things to me. And, and even with his help, I still had to go out and spend hours and hours and hours reading up on the brain and and blood the blood brain uh, the brain blood barrier and just all this different uh medical stuff and and how the uh nanites that they make that uh work in uh medical circles uh how it how it actually takes place in order to have because I've got to have a good understanding of it but I don't pass all that nitty gritty on to you the reader I but I have to know it myself in order to not make something not work. Right, right, right. I actually was talking to an author and this conversation took place off air, but she said writing a book is like an iceberg. What the reader sees is just the top 10% of what the author already actually knows about that world. And I read something, a quote from JK Rowling, she'll be talking to a fan and they'll suddenly look at her like she just skipped 20 pages and is talking about something they've never heard about. (laughs) And that's because it's all in her head. Right. And I imagine every author is like that to an extent. Right. And, but then again, you know, we write a book once and obviously it's over a long period of time and we put our blood, sweat and tears into it. But there, there you get into people that, you know, that really enjoyed that book or whatever. And they read it two or three or four five times uh you know it's like uh rocky horror picture show i mean there's people that have every single word of that movie to to memory (laughs) and uh know more about the characters than the people who portrayed them so you know that's that's the other side of the coin so do you have some fans that know everything about your characters i have a few (laughs) <laughs> that are that call me uh, and and honestly when somebody does that uh, nine times out of ten they become a beta reader for me <laughs> so that beta reader is somebody that reads the book before it's it's ever published and and gives me feedback on it and that is a is a good thing too going back to a new writer and what a new writer should do you need to get some people to read the stuff that you end up writing before you ever put it out there because and you need to make these people not your brother your sister your mother your cousin you need to make this a person that that doesn't have any skin in in personally offending you because that's what they're going to do they're going to come out and they're going to say this and that and uh and it's going to make you cringe and might hurt your feelings but if they're you know being honest that's what you need to hear you need to hear well there's a you know issue here or there's an issue there and you're not going to get that from somebody who's afraid of hurting your feelings right right um my friend i've mentioned her twi- a few times now judy l moore she actually on twitter and her blog which is at blackwolfeditorial.com she actually does a tip of the day and one of her recent tips, I don't remember, it was sometime this week, it was find someone to read your manuscript, not family. Exactly, exactly. So, and she's had several other interesting tips, and you know, she does... One of my favorite, one of my favorite beta readers is, uh, <clears throat> she just took it to me, uh, emailed me or Facebooked me or something, PM'd me or sent me a thing and said, ah, I really just, this is just, it pisses me off. And I didn't think this was very good at all. And so <laughs> after I begged and pleaded with her to keep reading and she gave me more feedback, she's been one of my most 
valuable resources. That's great. Now, what about book reviews? Do you pay for professional book reviews or? No, I do not. I give out copies to um, professional reviewers that request them. Uh, a lot of indie authors will that do do have uh, people that they send what they call an ARC, which is basically given a free copy to somebody so that they'll review it. But um, I don't do that. But however, I do like uh, uh, with the audio version of my book, um, I sent it to a guy who who put out there that if I had a, if anybody has an audio book, they want it reviewed. <coughs> Excuse me. They uh, send me a copy and I'll and I'll send uh, I'll give a review. <clears throat> but I basically steer away from that because that's one thing that if you try and if you try and um, BS the uh, the readers and it's a good way to to cut your longevity in the in the whole situation because <clears throat> people aren't fools you know um they if you tell them you're getting a certain product and you don't give it to them then uh they're going to uh they you know one person out of 10 will say something good about you but nine people out of 10 will say something bad about you if there's something bad to be said well, that's that's very much uh, good advice. Um, now, when you mentioned the website, let's go back to that for a minute. Should, say, a writer who knows that their publication date is, we're going to say, three months out, should they start that site and start doing blogs, short stories, flash, uh, flash fiction, that kind of thing? Yeah, and there's there again, that's a matter of preference for the particular author, but... <clears throat> There's no definitely no harm in it, uh, but it would, it's something that you, you got to look at. Um, what is the terminology? Um, work smarter, not harder. Put put um, like there's certain things that I've done in marketing that have given me no return on investment whatsoever. So the time that I that I set aside for that type of activity has got to be less than the things that maybe I don't like doing so much, but they pay off in big returns. So do what you need to do as far as the website's concerned and a blog's a good idea, or, or like you said, flash fiction or doing a few short stories and putting them out there for free. Now, this is a really important point that I haven't talked about since we've been on is my first original short story was published in John O'Brien's book, The Untold Stories. So that short story was out there. And when John agreed to let me go ahead and publish my own story, he you know, basically allowed me to take that short story. And then I used that as a funnel. And this is, I say this word, and I don't think it's copyrighted by these people, but um, I always thought of it as just a, a, a gateway to my uh, to my full-size novel was basically I just put that out there for free on Smashwords, which is another um, digital platform that gives it out to iTunes and, and Nook and Barnes and Noble and, and all the different places except for Amazon. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, so I used that book, that short story and put it out there again and said, if you enjoyed the short story at the end of it and you'd like to read the full length novel, here's a link. And that link led to my website because Smashwords doesn't allow you to point to an actual Amazon page. So it went to my website and I also published it on Amazon for 99 cents. And that 99 cent book on Amazon gave you a link at the back of it to the full length novel on Amazon, which is legal. And uh, eventually they price matched the Amazon page at 99 cent where you send in a thing saying, hey, I can get this book for free on Smashwords. And after about a month, Amazon picks that up and doesn't charge anything for that short story. That short story gets read and because there's, you know, it's a free book, right? So you go out and read it and you find it in a genre and you like it, then you're going to want to see the rest of the story and bada bang. Right. I mean, that's like, like I said, I just think the whole process behind it is fascinating. I don't presently have the time, maybe one of these days, because granted enough people are always, 
I do occasionally share small bits of my writing and and a lot of people are going, Ooh, I want, I want to see more of this or you need to, you need to fix this or you need, you know, cause I have friends that read, read for me a lot. Some of them are actually authors cause I beta read for them and, sure. and they know that I write, but that I never really share it, but they'll still sometimes read my stuff anyway, even though they don't know I'm not really working towards publication. And I don't know about you, but I write to get the characters and the voices out of my head <laughs> and give them a home well, of their own. Uh, you, you know, like I said, the way that I got into this was kind of backwards, but uh, I found that I enjoy it. And uh, I've decided to make it something that I'm going to continue to do just because I I enjoy it so much. And uh, I'm not going to try and turn it into something that's weighing over my head but like you said off off air with me, we talked about um, if you like to do it, you know, if it's something that that grabs your attention and you want to, if you want to do something that get after it, do it, you know, and you'll learn through that experience. If you sat down, because I didn't have any of this experience two years ago, I had no idea what of you know how to to direct people from a short story to a long story and i didn't know how amazon worked i didn't know how smash words worked i didn't know any of this stuff and honestly the only way i learned it was doing it they often say that experience experiencing something firsthand is often the best way to learn it i well for me it is i you know there's different people are different but uh yeah just going through the process has taught me a lot and and a lot of things that you know, like you said, uh, you can read the manual, but until you sit down and actually put some time in doing it, you're not going to understand it. And and you once you understand it, then it's there. So do it. That's you know the old uh, one of the most brilliant marketing strategies ever. Just do it. Now, question. John O'Brien essentially took you under his wing and helped you get your start. Do you have any plans down the line to pay that for pay that back by helping another up and coming author get their start? Absolutely not. There's no way. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, definitely. I will definitely do that. And the thing of it is, you gotta you've got to and and the community of writers that I deal with is so amazing. The indie authors, it's not um, everybody for themselves. It's it's so amazing how many people give a, give you a leg up. Um, Joe McKinney, uh, who I haven't mentioned, but I should have because he's a dear friend and he's a wonderful author. And he read my first book and volunteered to give me. Um, a uh, blurb for um, a review saying what, how he, how much he loved it. And, you know, he's a Bram Stoker award winner in horror. And so that gave me street cred immediately, you know, and things like that in this, in this industry didn't happen 20 years ago. Didn't happen 10 years ago. Didn't happen five years ago. I mean, it's just really boiled up with the indie based, um, the independent writers, you know, and, and the self publishing thing, because, you know, we don't have this, it's not a finite pie. People, like you said, you love to read in different genres. A lot of people are just like that. They love to read in different genres. And if they like a story, it doesn't have to be a particular genre that they, that they're reading in. Did that answer your question? (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, if someone out there says, but I wanted, I always wanted to go the traditional route, what would you say to that person? Go for it, but don't expect to, to see immediate results. Um, I can tell you people, I, I'm not sure if it was Stephen King that got the uh, thousands and thousands of rejection letters or who it was, but I remember a very famous author got letter after letter telling him that he would never be anything throw away his typewriter or, or whatever it was at the time. Um, throw away your computer. Don't write on it anymore. You know, go out and buy a fishing pole or something, you know, to that effect. Don't let anybody ever tell you you can't do it. I was 50, 
four years old when I published my first book. You know, don't tell anybody that it's too late. Don't, you know, don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it. You know, just sit down and do it. And, and that is what it takes. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't depend on somebody else. It just depends on your willingness to, to put in the time and effort to make it happen. Now, one of the things I've noticed on social media, because while I'm not active in the social media writer community because I'm not a writer, I do, for lack of a term, troll them on Twitter. Now, I don't, you know, I more like stalk because I don't try and stir up <laughs> antagonizing conversations, but I do kind of watch for things. And and I've noticed, a, I don't know if it's a trend or just some people put writer in their bio or aspiring author, but I've also noticed a trend of wannabe writer or aspiring writer what do you think of that term wow i fall victim or i fell victim to that early on because i just you know i had trouble calling myself an author you know or a writer so what do you do well i'm a computer expert but i write on the side but you know that's not who i am i mean i'm a writer i wrote something you know i put it down on paper and that's there uh, that's another cool thing about being a writer is after you've told that story and put it down on paper or, or uh, ones and zeros on a computer somewhere, it's out there. You know, it used to be you had a verbal tradition where you passed on stuff by telling a story, but now you know we've got the print and we've got the computer and we've got this magical information age where you can find all this stuff. You know, once you put that down and put it out there, it's out there. You know, that's a legacy of mine that I that's you know. For me, I just uh, I haven't told anybody this yet, but with my book coming out, I've dedicated it to my grandson. I just, you know, um, he's 10 months old, and I put it in the front of it. It says, for Finn, uh, I hope you read this and find out that your grandpa was a cool dude, you know, <laughs> because that's going to be there for him to look at, you know, down the road when he's 20 years old and I'm gone, you know. Well, let's hope you're not gone in 20 years because I'd like to still see books of yours coming out. Because <laughs> last I checked, there's no upper age limit on writing. No, and that's another cool thing. Like I said, don't let people tell you you can't do it because you're too old or you're too young. or um, it's, it's just, you know, something you just got to do. Now, what about the author that says, well, I, I may be able to pay for editing, but I don't know if I'll be able to pay for the professional cover, or I don't know, you know, I don't know if I can come up with the full two grand to do everything. If I have to cut back between the marketing, the co professional cover, and the editing, I've got to cut corners Whatever you somewhere. don't spend in dollars, whatever you don't spend in dollars, you're going to have to spend in time. If, the, if you can't afford any marketing, then you're going to have to be the marketing coordinator and go out and walk the streets and knock on doors. And by knock on doors, I mean, go to bookstores, go to uh, the public library and, and, you know, go do a thing here, go to a book fair there, you know, um, that kind of thing. Uh, as far as what to cut back on, if you're going to cut back on uh, the first thing I'd say not to cut back on is editing. I would definitely say if you're going to spend any money at all, spend it on an editor. First and foremost, I'd have second to agree thing, with second you. Second thing, second thing is a cover, because whatever, no matter what anybody tells you, people judge a book by its cover. I'd have to agree with you because there's only been three books in the past ten years that I can recall that I just couldn't finish reading, and I did my research and all. And I looked them up a while ago before I started the show. I looked up all of them were self-published books. And I'm willing to bet that not one of them had been through a professional editor. Well, I don't do reviews anymore. I don't review other people's stuff because, you know, I'm very close to that. So, but when I did, before I ever started writing, I read a zombie apocalypse book by I don't even remember who it was like totally in a that doesn't matter but um you know he killed off a character in, in one chapter and then the next chapter the character was running alongside him and having a conversation with him you know that is just the kind of thing that is going to kill any book and True. your reviews are going to show it and if you put out something that's garbage 
it's going to show up in your reviews. And, and that's what drives your book. Once your book is digital, once it's going to drive the digital copy of your book, once it's out there, you've got to have a uh, readership, that's, you know, like I said, one out of 10 people, maybe if you're lucky, you get 10% of the people that read your book are going to leave a, a, a review that doesn't guarantee it's going to be a good review, but one in 10 is going to leave a review. If that, that's, that's a high number too. That's, that's kind of shoot for the stars. Um, I think family reunion has 149 reviews right now with a, an average 4.3 rating out of five. So that's really good, but there's, definitely a bunch there's definitely some one star reviews in there there's definitely some two star reviews in there but if you don't have a good edit on the book you're going to end up with a bunch of bad reviews or no reviews at all and then your book isn't going to do anything all right so basically you're saying if you've got to cut back spend the money on the editing and the mark and the cover in that order yes and maybe you can cut back on marketing at least for a while Right. A lot of that marketing you're already paying for. If you've got an internet connection, that's marketing. If you've got a, a telephone, that's marketing. You know, if, you, if you've got a feet and a will and you can get copies made of the front cover of your book or a synopsis of your book or, or can spend the time to uh, have free lecture on, on uh, your genre at, at the local library – then, you know, those things you can do without having to spend money. Uh, where you're talking about money is actual advertising. Um, uh, BookBub, I just did a BookBub deal in June and sold 1,400 copies of the book one, in one day. That's how, that's how good they are. They charge you for that. That's okay, a, uh, what you is, know. did you say BookBub or BookHub? BookBub, B-U-B, B. O O K B U B, and uh, basically it is a um, commercial setup where you pay them to uh, put your book out. Now you have to discount your book because it's a discounted site, <clears throat> and people can go out and join BookBub for free, and you get an email every day, and that email will focus on what kind of books you like, and it'll give you five books at or two books at ninety nine cents that were normally. Four ninety nine or three ninety nine, or it'll give you a, a free book, or it will give you a, a book at half price. And uh, but those are the kind of things that cost money, and they don't accept everybody. So you've got to build up a little bit of a rep to get on those. But and then you know, like you were talking about before, Google and uh, Google ads and Facebook ads. Um, the best thing that I've found is to is that you're going to get out of. Uh, you're going to get out of it what you put into it. Um, advertising, you're going to either pay money for it or if it's free, if free advertising is you're paying what it's worth nine times out of ten. Well, I have to say on that note that even though I don't charge for my interviews and never never will because, quite frankly, <laughs> it's a labor of love, I hope you get a little more out of it than that. No, no, that's not what I meant. I but, know. Yeah. I'm teasing. Yeah, I got you. But, you know, because there again, this is time that I'm putting into this, and that's worth something to me. My time is worth something to me. Your time is worth something to you. But guess what? I'm going to promote the heck out of this show and your your site because you were kind enough to have me on and vice versa. So that is a win-win. Didn't cost me anything, but I had to, you know, I've had a computer connection with a headset and Skype, and we're able to do this in this technology, you know, in this technological wondrous age that we live in. And it's really cool, and I really appreciate you having me on. Hey, I've, I have to say, I've had not just U.S. authors. I've had one from Australia. I've had a free, I've had two, I've had a freelance editor from New Zealand, an author from New Zealand. And I'm just now starting to find U.S. authors. So it's one of those things of, yeah. Yeah, and it'll build on itself. Like you said, you know, um, I I got a lot of author friends. Guess what? They're going to know about you, and you're going to have more interviews, and your site will grow, and their books will sell, and everybody is going to benefit through that. So. Right, and like I said, I consider it's. I literally I started the show because I was doing it under the old show tag, and then I decided 
no, my love of books and writing, they need its own little corner. <laughs> because I didn't want my discussion of North Korea and Kim Jong-un to be mixed in with episodes about books and writing. Because they just get, lo- like you put it, lost in the noise. Right. Because people that are looking for information on Kim Jong-un don't want to hear about your book. Exactly. They want to know exactly. what's going on with the South China Sea and what missiles North Korea launched lately. And people exactly. that want to hear about your book want to see about your book and five other people's books. And maybe an editor or an agent, if I can get one to come on, or a, pub- a publisher or something like that. But they're not, they don't care what Kim Jong-un did as a teenager. Exactly. So that's why I decided those two things needed to go their separate ways. And I pulled the episodes out and set them up separately. So I think th- you've got a wonderful idea, and I and I wish you all the luck. And I think it's going to be a, a wonderful success for you. And like I said, you know, next year this time we'll we'll be back together, and we'll have another book for me, and and hey. we'll see how many thousands and thousands and thousands of listeners that you have. Well, that would be awesome, and you're welcome to keep my email, so you know how to find me. And of course, there's a contact form on my website. But this isn't about my show. This is about you. So why don't you give out your social media information? Uh, Twitter is D-E-B, or it's at D-E-B-P, or D-E-B-R-U, or gosh, my goodness. Can you cut this out and we'll try that again? Um, My Twitter is Debrian P, at Debrian P, and that's D-E-B-R-Y-A-N-P. Um, my website is P Mark DeBrian. That's P M A R K D E B R Y A N dot com. And, um, Facebook is P Mark DeBrian on Facebook. Please look me up and friend me. Um, I don't have an author page because I like to interact with, uh, everybody on my page individually. And so I've, I've not opened up an author page, not that I won't someday in the future, but I've uh, decided to to do it that way. So um, let's see. I got Facebook. I did the website. I did Twitter. Uh, what am I missing? I don't know. I think you covered um, the highlights anyway. <laughs> and I'll bet but if you contact are... me and once you once you look me up on Facebook, uh, pretty much everything that I do gets directed through there and through my website. So and they both commingle so well that once you're a member of either one, you're going to know about the other. Um, my email, ha, huh. my email is p p m debrian at gmail dot com. If you want to drop me a line, that's p m d e b r y a n at gmail dot com. Well, Mark, I thank you very much for being a guest, and I hope you have an outstanding day and happy launch day. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. You are uh, you have been an awesome guest. Thank you so much. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. A Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's bio for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services. Nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com.